One's learning style is comprised of many parts interacting together. One's environmental preferences include light, temperature, the ability to have food or drink on hand, location or seating when studying, and sound. Do you prefer a brightly lit room or dim lighting, or perhaps you prefer natural light? What about the temperature? For example, do you become tired when it is too cold or too hot? Do you prefer to have snacks or something to drink when studying? If so, one tip is to surround yourself with healthy snacks. As for location, do you prefer working at a desk, a large table, on the floor where you can spread out, perhaps on a couch or bed, or maybe even standing up at a tall table? Howard Gardner's Multiple Intelligences is based on brain research identifying areas of intelligence that appear to be more biologically based. Our society tends to put greater emphasis on linguistic and logical mathematical intelligence. But other intelligences are equally valuable and a student should be allowed to learn through his or her areas of strength. One's interests and goals are also an important part of creating a personalized learning plan and these goals and interests can change often. Modalities are perhaps the best known category of learning styles, but most only know about the three main categories of hearing, seeing, and hands-on. However, there's more to modalities than that, and we will look at this in a moment. Personality types is another popular category of learning styles that we will explore in greater detail. It is a unique combination of all of these things that defines you as a learner and why personalizing learning to each individual student is so important. Modality, or mode of learning, is how we initially perceive our world. If you move your hands a lot when you talk, like to learn by doing, can memorize a list better if you write it down, prefer to draw out your ideas, or need to doodle when listening to a lecture, or perhaps you need to move to think, you might be one or more types of a tactile kinesthetic learner. How about reading? Do you retain information from reading text? Or do you need pictures or graphs? If you answered yes to either of these, then you might be a visual learner. What about auditory? Do you learn best by hearing a teacher talk? Or do you need to talk it out yourself? You might want to talk with a fellow student, or maybe you talk to yourself. And no, this doesn't mean you are crazy. This just means that you process information this way. Learning options need to be made available so students can at least start off learning something, um, especially something new, in a way that matches their preferred mode of learning. This reduces frustration and increases likelihood of success. Note that you can be strong in one area of a category and not in another. For example, somebody might not learn well by listening, but would learn well through verbalizing. Personality can then influence whether to verbalize online or with others. One's personality is made up of many parts. Global refers to a preference to see the big picture first, whereas sequential refers to the preference for learning or doing things step by step. Abstract or concrete refers to a preference for how information is presented or types of activities one engages in that leans towards either the abstract or the concrete. Independent or social refers to one's preference to do work alone, which would be independent, or with others, which would be social. Social can range from just one-on-one -on -one to small group or even to larger groups. Peer, authority, or self are three sources of motivation. Some of us are motivated by peers or authority figures, while others are self-motivated without the need for recognition or even approval. Other key traits include preferences for creativity, productivity, presenting, and competition. Presenting can come in many forms, and what you prefer, again, depends on other aspects of your personality. One way to present is to perform on a stage, whether that is a literal stage or some other forum with an audience, such as a lawyer in a courtroom. Another way to present is to author a book or article, and perhaps, if one is extroverted enough, to give a book signing or to present that article at a conference. 
A producing personality is one who enjoys schedules and a sense of completion. This person might prefer workbooks, planners, organization, and have an appreciation for rules and procedures. Personality types who enjoy competing sometimes enjoy competing against others, while others might just prefer to compete against themselves. In other words, setting goals, reaching those goals, and setting new ones. For example, a person might take karate and diligently work towards the next belt, but not engage in sparring or kata competitions. Learners who enjoy creating might create something for a specific purpose, or they might just wish to create for pleasure. They might be artistic in their approach, or they might be more methodical. Also, they might create physical things, or their creations might be intangible ideas. Putting it all together. As noted before, one's learning style is comprised of many parts, and it is the unique combination of these parts that makes up each unique person. For example, a creative type who has a preference for the concrete might be a scientist, inventor, or architect. Meanwhile, a creative type that prefers the abstract might be an artist, creative writer, or a philosopher. However, there's more to it than this. For example, a person can have equal appreciation for concrete and abstract. An architect can include abstract ideas in the design process. Also, other aspects of a person's learning styles must come into play. For example, a creative abstract type who does not prefer to read or write is not likely to become a creative writer. A musician who does not like to perform might only work in the studio or perhaps only play for pleasure instead of giving concerts. When designing a personalized learning plan for a student, all of the aspects of that student's learning style should be considered. However, one needs to also consider the student's life goals, current academic level, which is whether or not any gaps need to be filled in or if the student needs to be allowed to zoom ahead, and of course the student's family scenario, such as whether or not the home includes shelves of books, access to a computer with the internet, or if the family tends to travel often. Creating a plan with all of these considerations can lead to an increase in student motivation and persistence. Take, for example, a current concern in science education. There is a cycle that begins with the science teacher teaching according to his or her learning styles. This leads to the science students with the same learning style as the teacher being the successful ones. Other potentially brilliant students drop out of the science program. This in turn can lead to a stagnant subject because only the successful science students become science teachers regurgitating the same way of thinking. As you can imagine, in science, this could be fatal. Research shows that students are more likely to complete learning tasks in a timely manner when they value the lesson's goals, feel like they can be successful, and are offered clear expectations and support. Tasks should have relevance where students can ask the question, why do we need to know this stuff, and get an answer that makes sense. Learning should be aligned to the student's own values and goals. Students should feel a likelihood of success is possible, and this is promoted by making sure each student has the necessary prior knowledge and skills, as well as aligning learning to each student's learning styles. Guidance also influences student success. Guidance comes in the form of clear expectations and directions, as well as from caring teachers and support staff. Through personalized learning, students can be supported in seeking their own paths to their own dreams.